if you're a coaster enthusiast, then it's very possible you might have made a list of your favorite coasters. It could be as simple as a top 10, or in the case of Ryan and I, a top 50. He and I have ridden close to 300 different coasters as of now. This will be part one of a two-part series where we will be discussing our top 50 coasters. Part one will be 50 through 26, and then part two will be the top 25. Before we get into the top 50, let's go over the first 10 coasters that miss the top 50. 60, I have Hagrid's Islands of Adventure. 59, I have Ghost Rider Knott's Berry Farm. 58 is Sky Rush at Hershey Park. 57 is Montu at Busch Gardens Tampa. 56 is Invertigo at Kings Island. 55 is Steel Eel at SeaWorld San Antonio. 54 is American Eagle at Six Flags Great America. 53 is Gemini at Cedar Point. 52 is New Texas Giant at Six Flags Over Texas. And 51 is Wonder Woman Gold Monster Coaster at Six Flags Fiesta <coughs> Texas. Ryan, what do you have? 60 is Wildfire at Silver Dollar City. 59 is Behemoth <coughs> at Canada's Wonderland. 58 Screaming Eagle at Six Flags St. Louis. 57 Raptor. 56 Silver Bullet at Knott's Berry Farm. 55 Superman Ride of Steel at Six Flags America. 54 is American Thunder at Six Flags St. Louis. 53 is Boss at Six Flags St. Louis. 52 is Apocalypse at Magic Mountain. And 51 is Apollo's Chariot at BGW. One more thing before we get into the official list. Let's go over our personal preferences so you guys can kind of get a general idea of where these rankings are coming from. What I look for most on a coaster, if a coaster has a powerful launch or just any launch in general, I tend to rank those higher than coasters that have a lot of airtime in it. But I also value a great sense of speed as well as an intense ride experience with smoothness also playing a role. Airtime is my first priority and intensity and a very well paced attraction. With that all out of the way, let's get into the top 50. Ryan, why don't you start us off? 50 is Kraken at SeaWorld Orlando. This is my favorite floorless coaster. 2022 was when I last rode it. Right after the repaint, it was very intense. Every inversion was whippy. The mid course was turned off. So the second loop was great. And the last corkscrew was amazing. Very solid attraction and a very smooth one. My number 50 is Goliath at Six Flags Great America. Despite being one of the shorter RMCs, it packs a punch. The first drop is awesome. The airtime hill before the dive loop is really powerful, especially when it's raining, which by the way, rain rides on Goliath are wild. The dive loop is a unique element for an RMC and the zero G salt is the best I've experienced with that inversion type. Even though the two overbanks don't really do much, the great elements that Goliath does have help it crack the top 50. This is my second favorite coaster at Six Flags Great America and it maybe would have been a little bit higher if those two overbanks did some and also if the drive was a little bit longer, that would have been quite nice. 49 is Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure. The coaster with way too long of a name and a very long layout. This is my favorite family oriented coaster by quite a large margin. It has seven launches, which is crazy. It was once the most expensive roller coaster in the world due to its theming. I love the theming on this thing. I've grown up as a Harry Potter fan, so I really like it. Very long, great backwards section. I actually enjoyed the drop track and the last section of the ride was my favorite part with the dragon's fire. Number 49 is Aries Alpine Coaster at Aries Resort and Winery. How often do you find someone who has an Alpine coaster in their top 50? Not very often. In fact, I actually have two of them. This is unironically my second favorite coaster in all of Illinois. And this was the first Alpine coaster I rode where I actually got to go full speed the whole time. Imagine how I value a great sense of speed. It's really fun blasting through the trees at decently high speeds. There's also one crazy airtime moment at the very end of the ride, which I wasn't expecting. It reminded me a lot of the dip out of the helix on American Eagle at Six Flags Great America. And that's one of my favorite airtime moments I've ever <laughs> experienced. So I don't have any complaints about that. Not quite my favorite Alpine coaster, but we'll get to that in just a minute. 48 is Mystic Timbers at Kings Island. The majority of people think this is one of the best wooden coasters in the world. I don't really agree with that, but I still like it for what it is. It has good pacing and nice airtime, and the shed is a nice touch. It's very smooth as well. Number 48 is the other Alpine coaster on my top 50, and this is the Smoky Mountain Alpine coaster. I think this one's at Smoky Mountain Alpine Park, which is somewhere in Pigeon Forge. This one is a little bit better than Aries Alpine coaster, in my opinion, because of the length. It was quite a bit longer of a ride, therefore I enjoyed it a little bit more, even though it wasn't quite as forceful as Aries Alpine coaster with that airtime moment at the end. That being said, I did still find some decently intense moments on it. Like, I actually started to gray out in some of the turns, which I don't know how that's even possible for an Alpine coaster, but it just happened, I guess. Really solid ride, and I would say worth the time if you're in the area. 47 is Ride of Steel at Darien Lake. I mentioned the other Ride of Steel at Six Flags America. I had a problem with that restraint when I was there. That's why I like the Darien Lake one a lot better. I was freely allowed to enjoy the airtime on it. I got to ride it five times there. Setting's great. Sense of speed is great. The helixes have some good laterals to them, and the airtime is actually very strong, especially that finale. Number 47 had potential to be ranked a lot higher, but because of the mid-course break run on Steel Force at Dorney Park, I can't rank it very high. I thought the first half of Steel Force actually rivaled another coaster that is much higher on this list, but we'll get to that at a later date. The airtime hills at the end didn't really have much airtime. I got a little bit, but it wasn't anywhere near as good as the coaster we'll be getting to later on. Despite that, it's still my top ride at Dorney Park, and a lot of people say Talon is better. I don't think it's anywhere close to Steel Force, in my opinion. 
46 is Thunderbird at Holiday World. My favorite wing coaster by quite a large margin. Starts off with a bang. 60 mile an hour launch in 3.5 seconds. Was definitely running faster when we were there in September. Intensity was cranked up to 11. B&M invert level. Almost on par with the Batman clones. One of my favorite inversions on that ride is the inline twist at the end, which gives a great amount of hang time. And it also has 140 foot loop, which is one of the tallest in the world. Number 46. This one shot down my list quite a bit this year. Racer at Kings Island. I mentioned this in the video I made about the surprises and disappointments of the year. I just wasn't feeling it this year. I still got some decent airtime on it and had some racing rides and I still had fun on it, but I don't know. I just wasn't quite feeling it this time around. I think part of the reason why I didn't enjoy it quite as much because I rode another coaster a month prior that took the racing element to a better level that made me realize that Racer at Kings Island wasn't quite as good. But then again, it's still a really solid ride. I would say my second favorite wind coaster, Kings Island. One I look forward to riding every time I go there. 45 is Millennium Force. A lot of people rank this higher than I do. I don't find it forceless, but the force is lacking in some certain elements. The drop is amazing. One of the best parts of the ride. The overbank after the drop isn't anything special. I've never grayed out on it like some people claim they have. The first airtime hill really hit in 2019, but it was completely dead in 2021. Basically, it showcases speed throughout the whole ride, but I like speed with airtime. The finale is my favorite part of the ride because it has the good floater hill, then it has the ejector speed hill, and then the last overbank is actually decent. It's a good long ride, and it's very smooth. My number 45 is Racer at Kennywood. This is the coaster that I was talking about with how Racer at Kings Island kind of left me disappointed this year with how the other coaster I rode about a month earlier ruined it for me. Racer at Kennywood, the trains stuck next to each other the entire time, whereas Racer at Kings Island, once the trains got to the far end of the ride, they were completely separated from each other. And I don't know, it kind of took away from the ride after riding Racer at Kennywood this year, but I would go as far as to say that Kennywood Racer is, I would say top two at the park, although I never got to ride Steel Curtain, so maybe that would have been better, but I'll have no idea. 44 is Magnum XL 200, the original hypercoaster. I first rode it in 2019, third ever hypercoaster I ever rode, so that was something. First half, not anything special, just some jank to arrow. But the finale is what really sets it apart from all the other coasters. Very sharp ejector hills that just pop you out of your seat. My brother couldn't take the last ejector hills because they were too much for him. For me, it was just enough. Even though it's not the smoothest ride out there, I still very much enjoy it. Number 44 is Thunderhead at Dollywood. Depending on who you ask, this might be your favorite GCI. I would personally call it second, but I can respect why anyone would have it as their top. As of late, a lot of people are saying it's the best ride at Dollywood. I can understand why some people would rank it second. The only way I could see anyone ranking it at number one of the park is that they've never ridden Lightning Rod, which unfortunately Ryan has never gotten to. Maybe sometime. Thunderhead, really solid GCI. Great laterals, good pacing, good airtime. I wish it was a little smooth in the back. I know it was coming off of a raid track before I rode it back in June, which this is being recorded in December of 2023. I got three rides on it back in June, and I thought it was really good, but not the best ride there. I wouldn't even quite call it top three in the park, but I can understand why people would have it at least at number two. But number one, I think it's a stretch, but it's still a really solid wooden coaster. 43 is Prowler at Worlds of Fun. When I went into this, I was expecting amazing things for it. Didn't get that the first few rides because it was sluggish and the airtime wasn't hitting on all cylinders. There was a lot of spots that it slowed down significantly. As the day went on, it kept getting faster and faster and I ended up getting nine rides on it and it was a very good GCI. The far turnaround really lost its speed for me when I was there. Other than that, it was pretty smooth until that final turn which rumbled like crazy. All in all, it's a good GCI Woody. Number 43 is Powder Cake at Silver Dollar City. This one shot up my list this year, and I don't remember the airtime on it being anywhere near as good in the past. The airtime I was getting on a lot of the hills was really sustained floater, and uh, I can't forget the awesome air compressed launch. Now my favorite SNS launch I've experienced, and that might be teasing another coaster that I've ridden, but we'll look at that in a little bit. Great launch, solid airtime, good airtime on the twisted hill at the end, and then the bus off falls turn before the lift hill had really solid laterals as well, and it's also just such a bizarre ride. Like, how often do you find a coaster with a launch at the beginning, then a lift hill towards the end, and also a transfer track that slides you up into the launch position. How often do you find all those in the same ride? Never. So yeah, Powder Cake is just a bizarre ride, but still a really good one. My third favorite at Silver Dollar City. Number 42 is Goliath at Six Flags Great America. My least favorite arm seat, but it still makes my top 50 because, oh man, I love this company. I only got one ride on it, which is not ideal for getting a good feel for it. One front row ride, second ride of the day in June of 2019. Right around where in the Blues won the Stanley Cup. That speed hill after the two overbanks, amazing airtime. I really like the dive loop. I like the stall, but I thought it could be better. And then the pop into the brake one was crazy as well. Very smooth, Woody. 
quality and all i wish is that it was a little bit longer number 42 is the gta hog phoenix Echnobles. i was unsure what i think about this one going in as i know some enthusiasts call it overrated and the gta says it's the best wind coaster out there i think it's in the middle between overrated and the best wind coaster i mean i don't know if it's in my top 10 woodies or not but i still thought it was really fun really good airtime from start to finish the finale was insane especially in the back which airtime thrills i don't know if you're watching this or not but it did in fact rain at Knoble, so i kind of got your experience in 2018 i got a back row rain ride on phoenix and the finale was just insane because i wasn't in my seat from very much of it at all i was laughing my head off because of how chaotic it was phoenix definitely my favorite ride there i know some people prefer twister i can kind of see where you're coming from but i'm definitely team phoenix 41 is powder keg at sdc my first ever launch coaster which to start off was a very powerful launch i was only nine years old when i rode this the first time since then i've rode it several more times got a good feel for it went to silver dollar city three times this year every single time all three of those camelbacks in the first section were hitting with very good floater airtime the bus saw fall section had good laterals good sense of speed drop was pretty good and my favorite part of the ride is the hill after the drop that goes into the helix into the brakes every time i rode this in the front row it was ejecting me out of my seat which was very fun the first of four coasters at holiday world to make the top 50 comes in at number 41 and that is the raven this coaster was close for me when i went in june i was uh, a little worried i wouldn't get to ride it this year but i went in september and it was running great this drop i heard wasn't firing this much as no, much this year but then again i never rode the back i only rode the front on raven which i do prefer the front by a pretty significant margin but that's because my preference is because sense of speed up there is insane especially in the second half like you're flying through the trees at breakneck speeds and it's just a riot when the fifth drop is firing and you're in the back it is really good but the fact matters i've only been really impressed by the fifth drop i think once i think it was during hollywood nights was 2021 so kind of knocks it down there a little bit but my main issue with raven is that it's a short ride but to be fair i thought it was running really well this year pretty smooth good laterals you want a solid wind coaster raven's good option but to be fair it's not even the best wind coaster holiday world because there's two others that are just downright ridiculous and if raven was in any other park it would probably be the best wooden coaster yeah there. exactly it's just the fact matters that it's at holiday world when you have other insane woodies like legend and voyage in the same park you can't really do much about it but still raven excellent ride number 40 for me is kumba at egt when i first rode this i thought it was the best ride in florida now it's i believe number three it's a good intense bnm sit down which we don't have many of those i think there was only five built thus far it was smooth at least all the times i've ridden it 11 times no head banging very forceful i liked the cobra roll and the zero g roll the best and the interlocking corkscrews were a nice touch and a good visual off ride it's just a good bnm looper avoid train three at all costs because i've ridden that thing four times twice of them were in that train and head banging all over the place and that's with riding defensively and uh ryan may or may not be going back there sometime in may i think so if you only see one train running at a strength around kumba good luck number 40 is twisted cyclone at six flags over georgia up until this past june this was my favorite coaster in the state of georgia even though it's not my favorite coaster in the state anymore is it still my favorite coaster at six flags over georgia yes to be fair goliath was down for me this year and i know a lot of people consider that the best ride in the park now but i can't really say for how it rode this year because it was closed for me and i was only there for one day this rmc is a shorter one like goliath is but i don't think there's any dead elements on this one the first drop is powerful the reverse cobra roll is super unique and one of the best elements of the ride i'd say the wave turn gave great sideways airtime and the last big drop on the ride which is the one before the last inversion that i would say is the best element on the ride it's just so powerful and it catches you by surprise rode it five times in 2021 i was really impressed by it got two more rides on it earlier this year and i thought it was just as good as i remembered despite being short twisted cyclone is an rmc that you cannot go wrong with as it packs a really great punch 39 is steel curtain at kennywood i am very thankful that i got to ride this and i think that's why it's higher on my list one back row ride on it i love the first drop how it just hangs you over and then plunge into a 77 mile an hour first drop which is crazy then you go through nine inversions all are unique too i didn't feel like any of them were similar at all the zero g stall was good the cutback was good every single inversion on this ride was good and it had good airtime as well over that camelback after the sea serpent roll i think if only it could stay open more before i get into my number 39 i just need to preface something all of the coasters in both of our top 50s he and i consider to be at least an eight and a half out of ten so there are no bad rides on here but this next opinion will probably be controversial to a lot of you and number 39 is el toro at six flies great adventure like i just said it's a really good ride for what it is but i just did not have the best experience on it i wrote it for the first time this past july and i didn't know what i'd think about it because it was coming off of a renovation after the accident it had in 2022 i had heard really good things about it because a lot of people say it's the best wind coaster in the world so i had pretty high expectations for it. I got two rides on it, once in the front, once in the back. I thought the front was better than the back, honestly, because there were more elements in the front that were really good. For me, the only part of the back that I was actually impressed by was the double camelback, because the first drop and rolling Thunderhill, I found to be way overhyped and nowhere near the best 
solvent on the ride. I do wish it was smooth though. I know some people said I was running smooth. I didn't think it was that smooth, especially in the back, which I did ride the second and back and not the very back, but I thought the very front was smooth in the second back. Maybe next time El Toro will be better, but it's still an awesome ride. Don't get me wrong. I thoroughly enjoy my two rides on it, but I just can't rank it higher because my experience wasn't that good. My second favorite at Six Flags Great Adventure. 38 is The Legend at Holiday World. Talk about a poster that shot up in my rankings about 30 spots from last time I wrote it, which was 2021 because it was closed last year. CCI Woody. Don't really care for those too much unless they're the big ones. It really knocked my socks off in September. Laterals were crazy. I think it's the most lateral centric coaster I've been on. The Helix was amazing. That's the best Helix I've ever experienced because of the lateral ejector airtime. I've had some, ex some experiences on the Legend with that coming out of it. And then the ending is really good too with the GCI like dips and turns. Not as rough as I thought it would be this year because Holiday World takes care of their woodies very nicely. As if number 39 wasn't controversial on my list. Number 38 is another similar situation to that. Steel Vengeance at Cedar Point. Three words. That harsh mid-course. It was trimming so hard for me every single time I rode Steel Vengeance, which I got five rides on it in July of 2021. That really hurt the ride experience for me because the second half was pretty much void of any airtime until the finale, which did have some good airtime because the ride had regained a lot of its speed by then. And also the third version was good. The first half saved this coaster from being nowhere near my top 50 because the first drop was fantastic. The first zero G roll is amazing. The stall under the lift hill is good. The double down after the stall as well as the double up into the mid course. Those are all excellent. The top hat was all right. The giant outer bank sadly didn't do anything for me either. Even from a back row now, I didn't get anything out of it. It's still a really good ride for what it is, but a lot of people say it's best in the world. I can somewhat see where it's coming from. At least if you get a ride without the mid course trimming, which I never had that luck. I really need to try it with no mid course to see if that'll improve my experience on the ride. But then again, even if I did get better rides on it, I don't see it moving up too much in my list because I do not value airtime as much as other people do. 37 is Mr. Freeze at Six Flags St. Louis, my favorite coaster at my home park. Didn't used to be, but I gained a lot of appreciation for how intense it is. The launch is good, but it's not anything special. Then the pullout into the inverted top hat is amazing. Every valley on this will slam you with positive Gs. You will know that as soon as you go up that top hat. Not to mention that's one of my favorite inversions because you get airtime going off both sides of it. Going through the overbank on the trip out isn't anything special, but then when you go on the return trip, it might make you gray out hard for a few seconds. Then you experience the same top hat again, the amazing airtime that you get going into it and coming out of it. And you slam into the brakes. Well, you actually don't slam into the brakes because the launch track is pretty long. You see the rainbow lights and that's how you know you've experienced a good ride. Oh boy. Number 37. As if the previous two coasters were not controversially placed, this next one is. In fact, I am rocking it. Yes, I do have Mystery Mine of Dollywood ranked over Steel Vengeance and El Toro for number 37. This ride, I did not expect to rank anywhere near as high as it ended up ranking because I did not like my first ride on it. I thought it was rough, the amount of headbanging, and it wasn't very enjoyable. But the second half was absolutely incredible. One of the best sequences of any coaster. From the thematic sequence, from the base of the second lift, all the way up the lift hill, even at the top of the second lift hill, to the beyond vertical drop into the double inversion finale. That whole section was phenomenal from the first ride. I'm like, I have to ride it again, just experience that again. I had way too much fun lapping it because this thing was a five minute wait for a good amount of my second trip at Dollywood back in June. And it was just amazing because I didn't like it my first ride and here I am marathoning it. The top two in that park had much longer lines, but then again, I had too much fun on Mystery Mind, so I think it was worth it. The first half, even though it's nowhere near as good as the second half and actually quite janky, I did enjoy it for what it was. And who doesn't love the vulture animatronic outside the front entrance? I think he's hilarious. I have heard him say some questionable stuff though. So keep your ears open if you listen to him talk for a while. He might actually be sleeping though, so keep that in mind as well. Definitely the most underrated ride at Dollywood, biggest surprise of the whole year for me. And I think it's a ride that a lot more people should give credit to. It was one of the first girl stars in the US, I think it was. And uh, in my opinion, it's the best girl star I've been on, although I've not been on anything overseas, but still. Mystery Mind, underrated, fun, got a great soundtrack, and uh, such a bizarre ride. Like, for me, it's impossible to not have fun on Mystery Mind now, and a lot of people don't like this ride. I'm not one of those haters. I'm a strong Mystery Mind defender. A lot of people rank Thunderhead over it. I can respect it, but I give the edge to Mystery Mind for being a bizarre ride through and through. I think it's worthy being my number three at Dollywood, although if you have Thunderhead ranked higher than it, I can respect it. 36 is Nitro at Six Flags Great Adventure. Didn't expect it to rank this high. One of those coasters that blew me away. First half was your typical being a hyper, great floater, and some decent positives. The Helix was one of my favorite parts of the first half. The mid course was turned off both times I rode it. So the second half was all ejector airtime. I don't know how common that is, but I got lucky and that's why it ranks so high for me. Very smooth and enjoyable BNM Hyper. From one BNM Hyper to another, my number 36 is Diamondback at Kings Island. Depending on who you ask, this might be your favorite BNM Hyper and I can't argue with anyone who has it as their top one. The airtime on it is ridiculously sustained. The first drop is, in my opinion, the best drop on any BNM. Yes, even over the Giga Coasters. And uh, there is 
so much airtime on the triad. If you want airtime on King's Island, Diamondback is your ride. You're out of your seat the entire time, whether you're in the front, back, or even in the center of the train in row eight, which I recommend trying row eight if you can, because if you can get some airtime room with that, you'll go flying. It's unbelievable the airtime I was getting. It didn't run quite as smooth for me in 2023 as in recent years, but because Racer was more disappointing than the past few years, Diamondback was able to jump back into the top three at King's Island for me, and I had it ranked second after my first trip in 2020. After 2021 and 2022, I thought it was fourth, but I think it's worthy to be top three in the park now. And like I said, I can respect anyone who has it as the top BNM Hyper or even top ride at King's Island, but for me, I have it ranked second in my BNM Hyper list. Also, who doesn't love getting destroyed by the splashdown in the end in the back row? Like, that's just too fun to not do. 35, another BNM Hyper, Candymonium at Hershey Park. I only got one back row ride, which was unfortunate. I had two days there, but one was a weekend, and the line was over an hour the whole time, so I didn't do it. And my first day got cut short because of rain. Other than that, I really enjoyed it. It was basically as smooth as Mako. Those two are probably the smoothest B&Ms I've ever been on. Great airtime. I mean, throughout the whole layout, it was really good. Two favorite parts, the speed hill, obviously. I love speed hills. That's like one of my favorite things on any B&M. That helix up into that hour bank turn, then you flip back, actually gave me some strong laterals and good airtime. I just wish it was a little bit more forceful and maybe a little bit longer. But other than that, it's a great ride and a showcase for the front entrance. Number 35 on my list is the Legend of Holiday World. Ryan mentioned this already, but this thing is just full of laterals. If you're looking for a coaster with great laterals, you can't get better than the Legend, in my opinion. From the moment you go down the first drop all the way until you hit the final brakes, you're constantly stuck to the side of the train as the ride tries to kill you with the lateral forces. It's just demonic. Rain rides on that thing are ridiculous as well, and 2021, it was unbelievable how good it was running. A lot of people rank this as number two, and some I think would even call it number one at the park if they didn't enjoy Voyage that much, which I think is a little crazy, but Legend is still really good. Also, the ending, it's ridiculous pacing, great sense of speed from start to finish, and some decent airtime moments on it as well, although it's definitely more focused on the laterals in the airtime, but you definitely can't go wrong with this one. Really good wind coaster and a great night ride like all the coasters of Holiday World. 34 is Thunderhead at Dollywood. I rode it first in 2018. It opened two hours before the park closed, and I didn't think much of it. Then I got back on New Year's Day of 2021, got 10 rain rides on it. Some of them with rain, some of them without, but the track was slick on every single one of them, and it was hauling. Every single hill was ejector airtime. The laterals were on point and it was really smooth and it's by far the best GCI I've been on. It tore through the layout and I just love the station flyby. That's a nice touch to it. Number 34 on my list is Prowler at Worlds of Fun. This is my top GCI and it's not even a close fight, honestly. I got 10 rides on it in 2022. After my first ride, I was like, that was really good, but I don't know if it's better than American Thunder. I got nine more rides throughout the year, including multiple during Haunt and those rides slid by as my favorite GCI. I got a one-click ride in the front row in the early afternoon in October of 2022 and the airtime was so strong and I was amazed by how good it was and the laterals were on point. Overall, I came away with a very high opinion of Prowler. Then I go back to Worlds of Fun's Haunt to ride Zambese Zinger in October and Prowler shocks me yet again. I got another front row one click ride this time at night and my gosh, it was insane because I thought I was going to fly out of the ride. It was so aggressive. The airtime was. I didn't find pacing issues with it. It was just overall a really good wind coaster. Too bad that a lot of people don't get to Worlds of Fun because I feel like they're missing out on the good ride experience that Prowler has. I think it deserves more attention. I said this in several other videos, but Prowler is a GCI that I wish Mystic Timber was. 33 is Alpengeist. By far my favorite DNM invert. They could have made it five feet taller, but they decided not to. <laughs> the first half, so forceful. The Cobra Roll is my second favorite inversion I've ever experienced because of how snappy and whippy it is. I was there for two days and I rode this thing 28 times because I couldn't get enough of it. The second half pales in comparison to the first half, but I still liked it. You could say that Cobra Roll was a little bit uncomfortable, but I couldn't get enough of it because of how whippy it was and I didn't bang my head on it. The rest of the layout smooth. I didn't get harsh mid-course trims that often, so that's why the second half turned out to be pretty good. Still not the best second half of a B&M invert, but the first half more than makes up for it for me. Number 33 is The Beast at Kings Island. The world's longest wind coaster kind of speak for itself. The Beast was incredible in 2023. I really liked it in 2020, 2021, and 2022, but my rides in 2023 elevated it to another level. It feels more like an adventure than a ride. And I mean that in the best way because you go so far out into the woods, completely separated from the rest of King's Island. The night rides on it, they're unbelievable. Not quite my favorite night ride in the park, but it's very close to being my favorite. The helix at the end, downright insane laterals, especially with how good it was running this year. It did get some track work in 2022 to help it run smoother, which I did notice that, but I felt like it took away from some of the bite that the helix had. Based on my seven rides back in August, I thought it was running incredible and the best I've ever seen it. It definitely solidified itself as my favorite wind coaster at King's Island in all of Ohio for that matter. Some people don't like the beast. I think it's just a pure fun ride. Number 30. 32 is the Incredible Hulk.
Hulk at Islands of Adventure. I first visited this park in 2011 when I was nine. Too small to ride it. Didn't get on Dragon Challenge. That was a big miss for me. My dad and my sister got to ride it. I was stuck with Hulk and by golly, it's a good <laughs> trade-off because it's probably the most intense roller coaster I've been on. The launch is ridiculous because it's inclined. That makes it that much better. Every single inversion on this thing is elite. I don't think there's a single bad moment on this ride. It does slow down a little bit in the second half, but it's still good. And the soundtrack. Oh, the soundtrack. I love it. But it's not my type of ride because it doesn't really have any airtime. It has the zero G roll, but that's pretty much it. I just love how intense it is. And it just keeps going. It's also very smooth since they retracked it and it did wonders for it. Number 32 is a decently short walk away from Hulk and it is Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket at Universal Studios Florida. Something I forgot to mention, I'm a huge fan of on-ride soundtracks as well and Rip Ride Rocket soundtrack is one of the best in my opinion. Since I wrote it in 2022, they had a lot more options on the main song list, but I did a lot of my songs from the secret song list and that ultimately is what made the ride so much fun for me. It's not the smoothest and I would actually say it is definitely the roughest coaster in the Universal Orlando Resort. Some of the most underrated positives on the treble clef and the airtime pops coming into and going out of the break runs. 10 rides on Rip Ride Rocket and it was really good fun. Like I said, I do wish it was smooth because that would probably make it rank a lot higher for me. Although given the coaster I have next in my list, I'm not sure I could put it above that, but we'll get to that in a minute. Number 31 is Jersey Devil Coaster. I rode this two days after it opened. I had very high expectations for it because of the prototype that I rode. It didn't have anywhere close to the force of the prototype. It pretty much had floater the whole layout the first time I rode it, except for the drop, which was ejector. Five total rides, and on my last ride, it was running incredible. I got a back row ride, and the first half was amazing. Then the mid course slammed to a stop. We were going like snail speed for about two minutes before we dropped off the mid course. Zero force throughout the rest of the layout. And then it finally went back into the station. The first half more than made up for it because it was running so good. When the mid course didn't slam you, there was a bit of floater on those last few hills. Number 31. If there's any coaster on either of our top 50 lists that the average person would have heard of, it would be this one. Space Mountain at Magic Kingdom. My first big coaster, Space Mountain's a huge sentimental favorite of mine. My last trip to Disney World came in March of 2018, and my most recent experience with this coaster was a 25 ride marathon over the three days I was there. I had been all the other coasters in the resort less than a year prior, and I had not gotten anywhere near enough rides on Space Mountain, so I'm like, screw it, I'm getting my laps into this thing. Let me just tell you, what a fun ride it is. My brother calls it Ejector Mountain, because there is actual airtime on this thing, and because of that, I would not call Space Mountain a family coaster. I would say it's smooth, although some people call it rough. I don't think it's rough, honestly. I thought it was pretty rough when I was a kid. The seats added the experience, in my opinion. They're very comfortable, almost feels like couch cushions and whatnot. Phenomenal sense of speed, because keep in mind, you feel like you're flying through outer space. So that should tell you all you need to know about how fast you're actually going. Like, you may be going like 27 miles an hour or something like that. You feel like you're going way faster. It's just an unbelievable adrenaline rush. Every time I ride Space Mountain, I have way too much fun on it, and I don't see any other Disney ride beating it. Yep, it's my favorite Disney ride of any Disney park I've ever been to, and I haven't been to Disneyland yet, and I haven't been to Disney World, like I said, since uh, March of 2018. So I don't see anything else beating Space Mountain, honestly. Even though you have rides like Tron and Guardians, I think Space Mountain still remains superior. My number 30 is controversial pick, Orion. I don't like this as much as a lot of people do. I thought this was definitely going to be my favorite ride in the park. Turned out not to be. The first drop is amazing. And then they call this element the wave turn. It's not really a wave turn. I think it's one of the most useless elements I've ever experienced. It pretty much has no force. Some people have said it has lateral sideways or something, but I didn't feel anything. Wrote it five times, that element's a dud. And then the turnaround could have been better as well. Then you get to the good part of the ride, which is the speed hill, camelback, the intense helix, and then the two ejector pops at the end. The end makes up for for this ride to dud elements in the middle, and that's why I have it this high. The smoothness and speed are great as well. Number 30, we're going to the Lone Star State for my favorite coaster in all of Texas. This is Mr. Freeze. I have not ridden this one forward yet, but based on my 10 rides in 2019 when it was still Mr. Freeze Reverse Blast, I was really impressed by it. The launch felt way more intense than the one in St. Louis, and I don't know why. I mean, it's Mr. Freeze. Ridiculously intense, insane inverted top hat, good overbank, awesome spike. Definitely did not have the best reliability though. It did go down multiple times if not multiple times a day when I was there, but I don't care. That ride was just phenomenal, and it'll be tough to beat for my favorite coaster in the state of Texas. Number 29 is Mamba at Worlds of Fun. I didn't expect this to be my favorite coaster in the park when I went, but it turned out to be that. Best way to describe this is an upgraded Steel Force. 11 airtime moments, which is a lot for a hyper coaster. A good majority of them are ejector airtime. First half is great with the floater airtime and the intense helix. Then the second half, you have all ejector bunny hills. Even the 
last hill into the brakes. Gives an ejector pop, which is crazy. Don't know if they'll keep it this way, but I hope they do for the foreseeable future because it runs so much better than its counterpart over in Dorney Park. Number 29 is the most underrated coaster I've ridden, Twisted Colossus at Six Flags Magic Mountain. This is the best ride in all of California, and I don't care what anybody says, it does not need to duel to be elite. A lot of people complain about it not dueling, and that's pretty much all I hear about these days, and I think that's totally unfair. I do admit, I did get extremely lucky, but the one time I did not duel, it didn't really change the ride, honestly. It was just a normal RMC. With that out of the way, Twisted Colossus' airtime is really good airtime, some of the best eventing coaster, and awesome zero G roll. That's probably my favorite element on the ride, and the Top Gun stall is really good. Going on six years since my last ride on Twisted Colossus, so I need to get back there and uh, revalidate my opinion because i'm always saying this thing is super underrated but i haven't ridden it since 2018 so i don't know how exactly it's running it's very possible that it might not be running well next time i'm over there but i don't see that being the case honestly i still think it'll be just as good as i remember maybe it'll shoot back up my list but twisted colossus does not deserve any of the hate it gets number 28 is an obscure one shivering timbers how many people get to ride it because it's in michigan wow it blew me away i thought this thing would be maybe in my top 75 but oh was i wrong it's a cci and it's the only reason to go to the park. Not the smoothest thing there is, but it's not anywhere close to the roughest thing there is either. It has so much airtime. Camelback after camelback after camelback. Non-stop airtime, and that's pretty much it. And the Helix at the end has strong laterals. This is one of the best wooden coasters you'll ever ride. Number 28 is Cheetah Hunt at Busch Gardens Tampa. Up until this past July, this was my second favorite night ride I've experienced, but I think it's still an awesome night ride regardless, even though it's not my number two, but rather my number number three. Great launches with the second one especially being a highlight. Great sense of speed. The inversion is fun. I just love running through this advantage like a cheetah. It's just pure fun. Maybe controversial to rank it as number two in the park, but I don't really care honestly. Can't get it off of it. Also, if you can get a fireworks ride on it, doesn't get much better than that. Number 27 is Goliath at Six Flags Over Georgia. I got two rides on this, which is lucky because it was crowded the day I went. One day ride in the front row and one night ride in the back row. That has a lot of air time. No mid course, so it's non-stop. Sense of speed is better than shiver timbers and that's why i rank it higher it's smoother and that helix oh it made me gray out both times i rode it and i got to ride it with some locals which was very fun one of the best night rides i've had because it goes outside the park not a lot of coasters go all the way outside the park on the parking lot and you get a night ride from it so that was really cool not my favorite bnm hyper but it's darn close number 27 is millennium force at cedar point this ride probably has the best sense of speed of any coaster i've ever been on honestly it is sustainable for such a long period of time and you feel like you're Sonic the Hedgehog as you run all over Cedar Point like 93 miles an hour and Sonic's nickname is the Blue Blur and Millennium Force I'd say that's a pretty accurate description of it. Overbanks I find to be decently intense, decent airtime on it but I ride Millennium Force for the amazing sense of speed it has. Some people call it overrated. I think it's fairly rated nowadays. Some people love it, some people don't care for it as much. I personally am one that loves it but a lot of people don't call it the best in the world so but that's just my opinion on it. I only rode it twice last time I went there and I definitely should have read it again but next time I get back there I'll for sure to get more than two rides on it because I think it's awesome. This is my number 26. Maybe Mako, SeaWorld, or Orlando. My favorite coaster in Florida for the time being. I've loved this ride ever since I first got on it back in January of 2021. I've rode it 24 times and one of them had the trim on the airtime hill turned off. If you get that experience, those hills hit a lot stronger. You can definitely feel it. All three of them were sustained ejector airtime if the trim is off. It's still great with the trim on. The only gripe I have with this ride is the second half. It's not any anywhere near as good as the first half. The camelback after the mid course doesn't do anything, but the overbanks actually pop you out of your seat more than the previous camelback. And then the glide around the water is very cool too. Mako's probably the smoothest coaster I've ever been on. Its airtime is very strong compared to the other ones as well. Rounding out the first half of both of our top 50s, line number 26 is Max Force at Six Flags Great America. If you want a short launch coaster that packs in a massive punch and actually has more to it than just the launch, Max Force is your ride. It's got an absolutely ridiculous air compressed launch, which is 0 to 78 in 1.8 seconds, and it's a gut punch, let me tell you that. Probably the most nervous I've ever been for a launch was my first time riding Max Force. The Heartline Roll, when I first rode it, it was my favorite inversion, and it was advertised the world's fastest inversion. It definitely felt that way. I was at uh, Six Flags Great America in June of 2019, which actually I think was a few days after Ryan was there. I missed Max Force by a few weeks, but I did see a testing, and I was thrilled to finally get on it in July of 2021. It was just as good as I hoped it would be. The Dog Tongue and the Max Dive Loop were fun elements and added to the layout. A lot of people complained about being short. I think it's satisfying enough to not complain about it, I guess, but it'll be a tough one to beat, and I don't see anything else in Six Flags Great America beating it anytime soon. I know a lot of people say Goliath Raging Bull is better. I would much rather ride Max Force over both of them. That rounds out the first half of our top 50. Stay tuned for part two, which will be uploaded the day after this gets uploaded. Some other questions you might have been wondering about for where they rank for both of us. If they didn't
didn't appear on this video or in our honorable mentions, it's very possible they'll be appearing on that next video. So stay tuned for that. Thank you guys again for watching, and uh, we'll see you in part two.